Welcome to a new Akamai video tutorial. My name is Mike Ellison, a senior solutions engineer at Akamai based in Amsterdam. And today what I'm going to show you is data stream. A data stream brings near real time middle mile visibility through customized data logs and aggregated metrics on CDN health, latency, offload errors and events. It provides raw logs as well as aggregated met metrics through push and pull APIs for agile and reliable CI CD uh, DevOps practices for both your CDN configurations and digital applications. So what I will be showcasing today is how to set this up. And to do so, we have here the uh, Akamai Control Center logged into my user developer trial. So to start off, we first need to add data stream to your existing contract. And you can do so by clicking on the marketplace icon. Look for data stream. And as you can see here, it allows you to start a 30 day trial. I'll explain to you what it is. Explain the FAQ on what it can do. As mentioned, it's both aggregating and sending you the raw logs. User guides are all available over here. You can start the trial. And as you can see here, it will say that your data stream trial will include 5,000 gigabytes, so five terabytes of traffic. And this is calculated based on the processing volume that is used within the Akamai platform. So you can accept the terms, start your trial. And there we go. Data stream is now added. So now that we have added data stream as a trial to our account, we need to actually configure it. And we can do so by clicking on the hamburger icon here. Type in data stream. As you can see, log delivery, real-time logs, you can also access this by scrolling down in the menu here, go to log delivery, click on real-time logs, and we'll open the data stream portal. As you can see, there's no streams defined yet, so please click on add new stream. And then we'll ask you for the following, a stream name, so we'll use data stream test. It's of course tied to my contract ID that you see here. You have the ability to utilize the raw logs or aggregated metrics, which will allow you to use the API, which can be uh, very helpful. We'll go with aggregated metrics for now. Next up, you have to define which property that is. So I have a web simple website set up. We're going to enable that for this property. And as you can see, you also have the ability to push data to any endpoint. And these endpoints can be AWS S3, Splunk, or Sumo Logic. But for now, we're not gonna push any data and we're gonna rely on the API that is available. So we're gonna continue to data sets. On the data set page, you can actually get the aggregated met metrics that you want. So we can look at these things like edge response times, HTTP status codes with filters on 2xx, 3xx, 4xx, and 5xx, traffic volumes, CDN offload, and origin response times. So for now, I'm just gonna select the HTTP status codes, traffic volumes, and also the CDN offload. As my website is hosted on our Akamai Net Storage, I'm not particularly interested in our origin response time or edge response time, so I'll go with this. You can select the time frame. For now, I'll go with one minute and click on review. Get an overview saying this is for this particular property that you've set up, or so known as a delivery configuration. We are going to be utilizing the data stream pool API and we have set up the time frame and what we actually want. So I'm going to click publish. As you can see, deploying this data stream configuration might take a little time. So click on yes. And there you go. 
our data stream configuration has saved and is being published to the Akamai platform. It's been called data stream test and it will share the delivery configuration for schrodingerstudios.com. I'm going to close this. Now you might think that is all the ta tasks that you need to do, but a commonly overlooked step is actually activating data stream inside of your property or your delivery configuration. And we're going to do that next. So our next step is adding data stream in our delivery configuration. We can do this by clicking on the hamburger menu and go to properties. Here we have our property, in my case, the Schrodinger Studios. We're going to click on version three, but actually on the gearbox here, we can have edit new version. Inside here, we are starting with version notes, adding data stream. You can place this data stream configuration anywhere you want. If you want to place it in a default rule, that is definitely possible. You can also put it in a sub rule if you want by doing blank rule templates. I'm going to call that monitoring. I'm going to add a child rule that I'll call data stream. This might be extra steps instead of just putting it inside a default rule. But if you have a large configuration, it is much easier to manage this with the tabs and sub rules. I'm going to click on add behavior. Now you can scroll down to data stream, as you can see here, or use the search function data stream. And what it will do, it will add in the behavior. And you can actually enable it. Now you can also add your data stream ID if you already have that. In that case, right now, it's only going to be looking at the binding if you don't actually add it in here. So just click on save. Now that we've saved the configuration, we're going to activate it. We can activate that on staging. And we can activate this also on production. We have not yet tested the configuration on staging. In this case, please be careful when pushing your versions directly to production. If you haven't tested on staging, it's not recommended. But there's virtually no impact in my case. So let's activate this on production. And there we go. With Akamai's new fast configuration activation or fast activation, this should be live in several minutes. Now that we have created a data stream configuration and we've added data stream as a behavior in our delivery configuration, we need to be actually looking at how to get the data. As we have not specified the data stream logs to be pushed to an endpoint on either S3, Splunk, or Sumo Logic. We are going to have to be looking into the data stream API in order to get the data. In order for us to get the information regarding the data stream API, please go to developer.akamai.com where you can find all the information regarding APIs. This is the main landing page where you can find everything. You can click here to go to the slash API path where you will find all the information regarding data stream and other APIs that Akamai supports. As you can see here, it's already listed, but in case you don't find it right away, type in data stream API. On here, you can find all the data stream API documentation. And this video tutorial will not cover on how to set up the APIs itself. We are expecting that you've already looked and reviewed at the get started with APIs and have working API client. That said, since DataStream is a new API, you still need to enable that for your, for your DataStream servers. So as you can see here, to enable this API, choose the API service name DataStream and set the access level to read only. So that's what we're going to be looking into next.
again, we're going to click on the hamburger icon. We're going to go to identity and access. And here we are in the identity and access management portal for Akamai. We have the users that are authenticated to so go into Akamai control center, which is myself. And you can also define your API endpoints. We're going to click on new API client. If you have an existing one, you can just add the data stream to your API. We're going to click on next. And in here, we're going to choose data stream. You have the ability to define multiple API endpoints, but for now, we are just going to be adding data stream. Choose access level, read only. Since data stream is only a get API, we do not need read write access to it. We're going to click on submit. Now we have a data stream API created. We will have a base URL where we can send information to, and we have an access token where we can actually send the data to. In order to get access, we have to set up a new credential. So here are your credentials. You will need this in order to get access to the data stream API. Please keep these client secrets, host, access token, and client token secure. These will not be shown again once this window is closed. So you can choose to copy them manually or download your client tokens and keep them secure. Now that we have an active client token, we can now go in and utilize the data stream API to get the requests back. So let's recap. We have activated data stream in our delivery configuration. We have created a data stream configuration. Please note the 2371 stream ID and the aggregated type. Now let's look into setting up the data stream API. As mentioned, this can be found on developer.akamai.com slash API. And you have two ways to get the data. You can grab the aggregate logs, which is what we've set up, or you can get the raw logs. And in the API summary here, you have examples on how to get the data. So we will be looking at the report aggregate logs. We have a sample here. This is the API call you need to make. Then we have the stream ID part here. In this case, it's 272, but in our case, it will be 2371 slash aggregate dash logs. And then you can have the parameters here to specify. The only two specified and required parameters are the start time and end time, which are in the ISO 8601 timestamp. We have some examples right here. And additionally, you can add in clear parameters to specify which aggregate metric you want, how large you want it to be, and which page, in case you have a lot of data. So now let's make a data stream API call. And in order to do so, I will be using a tool called Postman. If you're not familiar with Postman, I highly recommend looking into it. There are also tutorials online on how to set up your Postman in order to work with the Akamai APIs and the Edge Grid authentication scheme. In essence, in very short, it requires you to look into a request script and declare these variable tokens. Remember the credentials that you got. You need to load that into an environment, which you can see right here. Manage your environments. Click on Akamai data stream. Here are the tokens that I'm using. The script creates an authorization header and adds that to the request. And that will make sure to authenticate the actual requests. So here we have Postman. I have set up a request. It's going to be a GET request as specified in the API, HTTPS protocol. This is my unique endpoint, my base URL that I have to send requests to. And here we have slash data stream dash pool dash API slash version one slash streams. Here's my unique stream ID. 
and I'm requesting the aggregate the dash logs. And what I'm going to do right now is create a start and end time in 2018 on October 9th, the day of this recording. We're going to send that over. Right now, I'm getting back a 204, no content, which makes sense. Data stream wasn't active in 2018. If you get any other type of error, there is something wrong with your request. And if I, for instance, remove this character, it will show me an error code 400 with a message saying that I inputted the wrong date format. Um, you also have errors if you put the, uh, an earlier end date before start date, but that's just to exemplify it. If there is anything wrong with your authorization and you get a 403 error back, that means there is something wrong with the way you have authenticated Postman. You may not be using the right environment. You may not be using the right client. Basically, the data stream API and Akamai is telling you your request is not valid. If you get any types of responses back like this, you know that you are authenticated inside of the data stream API, but there's something wrong with your formatting. So let's dive in by changing this to 2019. October the 9th, 2019 until October 10th with the time frame. I'm gonna click on send. And there we have it, a 200 OK. We get the data back in JSON. We see all the requests coming in, in the error responses. Edge and origin response times. We're seeing the bytes per second. We're seeing the amount of cache hits, offload rate, time frame, and stream ID. Get some additional information here. As you can see, aggregate metrics. Now, if we want to specify, for instance, aggregate metric is 2xx and send that out. Now we have only gotten the 2xx in the aggregate metrics. And there we have it. This is how to configure data stream and utilize the data stream API to get aggregate data back from the Akamai Edge servers that we collect. There are other ways, of course, like the raw logs and pushing them to a destination endpoint. And of course, we can now take this JSON data and put it in any type of nice dashboarding like Grafana or any other tools that you might prefer. If that is of interest, we can look into that in a future video tutorial to showcase how we can get the data into Grafana and display statistics. But hopefully this is able to give you a good insight on how to set up the data stream. So let's recap on how to set up data stream in four simple tasks. Step one, add data stream to your contract. This can be done through Marketplace or contact your Akamai sales representative. Once it's live on your contract, create a data stream configuration with the settings that you want. Step three, add data stream inside of your delivery configuration and push that to both Akamai staging and production. And in the case of the aggregate API, set up a data stream API client and make the calls through any tool that you want. And in our case, we've been utilizing that with Postman. And there you have it. I hope this video tutorial has been helpful to you if you have any questions related to data stream, please feel free to reach out to me on mallison at akamai.com or send a message in the blog posts or LinkedIn post as specified. I want to thank you very much for watching and hopefully you can now feel comfortable to get started with data stream. Good luck and happy akamizing.